Hello. So I have uh, just uh, two things to mention uh, at, the, at the top today. First, uh, Ukraine. Deputy Secretary Blinken will meet later today in Washington with Ukrainian Prime Minister Yatsenyuk to discuss U.S. support for Ukraine's ambitious reform agenda, as well as uh, Russian aggression in eastern Ukraine. We reiterate that the people of the United States stand firmly with the people of Ukraine in their quest for a more democratic, stable, peaceful, uh, and prosperous and independent country. We are committed to using our good offices to urge all sides to speed implementation of the Minsk commitments, including a lasting, verifiable ceasefire and the pullback of heavy weapons under OSCE monitoring. And the second item, uh, the Secretary, the Secretary spoke yesterday with Brazilian Foreign Minister Vieira. The focus of the conversation was climate change and how economic expansion and reduced greenhouse gas emissions can go hand in hand. The Secretary also uh, had a uh, policy discussion uh, by phone this morning with some senior members of his team uh, with regard to Russia. And uh, he will talk uh, later today with his, uh, with his Iran team um, to, uh, uh, to go over uh, current, uh, current issues um, and uh, to keep in touch with them. So that's what I have uh, at the start. And turn it over to you, Matt. Well, can, uh, just uh, on the Secretary, uh, is there any update on his schedule? When, when is he going to appear in public again? Uh, I don't have any update uh, on uh, on his schedule of that uh, of that sort. Uh, he remains in the hospital and is uh, doing physical therapy and is in consultation with his doctors. Uh, but I don't have uh, I don't have an announcement about uh, you know, dates or timelines uh, for uh, for his. Of course, I know there's interest, and uh, as soon as we have anything, we'll uh, we'll share that. Well, I mean, it's been ten days now. There hasn't been a photograph. He hasn't shown his face anywhere. Well, uh, you know, he's, uh, he is the Secretary of State. He is the Secretary of State, and that's why we've been giving uh, giving you all uh, regular updates about uh, about his activities. You know, he underwent uh, surgery, uh, major uh, major bone uh, broken, and uh, so you know, that's uh, that. Of course, uh, takes some time uh, for recovery, and we've uh, you know described uh, that at the uh, from the very start. Well, um, I understand, but I think that you'll find that there's growing interest in what exactly. Uh, you know he's doing and why we why no one has seen hide nor hair of him well i think i've uh, you know uh, explained what he's been doing a over the last uh, day or so some I, video I, I i understand the interest uh, uh, and uh, you know i'm sure that uh, before too long that will uh, uh, that will also uh, come uh, go ahead right. other <clears throat> the only other things that i have are follow ups to yesterday so i'll um, defer okay. Me too, actually. So, let's, right. Nicola. just to follow up on Matt's question, so the secretary is in is in good shape, in good spirits. Yeah, he remains in good spirits. Is making progress. Is uh, you know is is doing uh, physical therapy in addition to uh, you know some some work on the phone. Um, so uh, yes, the things are things are progressing. And as uh, as Matt mentioned, there is no thought in this building. To <coughs> maybe to release a picture of or video link just to. To show to the world that that he's is perfectly okay. Uh, well, as uh, as I said in response to Matt's question, I think uh, you know I think that will that will come. I I I, I note uh, I note the interest. I uh, I appreciate it. I understand uh, the reason. So, uh, um, but you know we'll, uh, we'll when we have something to release, we certainly will. We re we recognize there's interest. Um, and I, I understand that it's it's hard to predict. But do you think that he he would be able to? To go to Europe uh, at the end of this month to 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 give a final push to the Iran uh, talks. Uh, well, I'd, I'd give kind of two responses uh, to that. First of all, um, you know, I, I you know, we've as we've said from the start, uh, you know, he he will have uh, he's going to uh, to go through his recovery process, you know, uh, aggressively but responsibly. I don't have a further uh, time prediction uh, to to affix to that. That's something that uh, you know he he and his doctors will. Uh, We'll have to uh, you know, keep under uh, keep under review. Um, uh, so I don't have I don't have a timeline. Uh, but uh, as we said uh, earlier, uh, with respect to the uh, you know the uh, June thirtieth um, uh, end of the uh, Iran nuclear talks, we remain uh, committed uh, to that. We believe it's achievable, um, and and so uh, that remains uh, that remains our focus. Well, this is a little different from what uh, Marie had said last week when she was asked specifically whether he. Uh, expected to be back in the negotiating room by the June 30th <coughs> deadline. She said, 
either yes, absolutely, or absolutely yes. The transcript will show which one, but there was no doubt. I'm in not trying mind. to walk back what she said. No, so, I, I don't. So you I'm expect not, him uh, to be in the negotiating room by the end of the month? Well, uh, again, I don't have uh, his his recovery is uh, something that uh, that he and his doctors uh, uh, are uh, focused on. Uh, so I don't have uh, a timeline to affix to that, but I, I also uh, see no reason to change uh, what Marie said last week uh, so, about. So, uh, so about there, you're not you're saying that there there is no complication that is causing you to change what was correct. What happened there. Jeff. Yes, Michel. Why, why is he still in the hospital since he did the operation last week and he's in good shape and in good spirit, as you said. Well, he's uh, he's doing physical uh, physical therapy, uh, and he's you know he's in close uh, proximity there to his doctors. Of course, the femur is a uh, is a major uh, a major bone, um, and so uh, I don't have uh, more to say about uh, uh, about it than that. He can, he can be at home and, and uh, does the physiotherapy. Uh, I, look, I'm not. I'm not going to comment from from here on the different uh, different options. This is uh, what he and his doc doctors have decided on, uh, based on. You realize uh, that you brought this on yourself. The, these 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 questions are not out of you know they're not completely unfounded questions to be asking. But by re by refusing to say anything more, I mean it's a decent question. Why is he still in? You know, in, admitted to a hospital. I mean, his house is not that far away from from the hospital. You know, why? Minutes. Why? Uh, I mean, and if he's on crutches, granted, it is hilly there, but you know, certainly he might even be able to walk there on crutches. I, we don't know. So, the secrecy is, you know, you're, the questions about what's going on you're bringing on yourselves by not being more forthcoming. That this this building is. Just well, pointing yeah, that yeah. out. If, that, if that's your comment, uh, then, no, it's then a comment. It's an appeal for some a little bit more information because what we what we're getting is we're getting is nothing. And as I'm sure you're aware, there is a vast army of conspiracy theorists out there who are starting to get you know a little bit more attention as this continues. Anyway, please. I, I understand, and I think uh, you know I, I I heard you the first time. Um, uh, so um, uh, moving on. Yep. Yes. On uh, Libya, uh, do you have any reaction uh, to the unity plan presented by the UN special envoy to Libya to the uh, parties there? Well, uh, first of all, we welcome uh, the presentation uh, of the of, of what is the fourth and final uh, draft of the Libyan political agreement, uh, which uh, was done by the UN special representative uh, uh, Bernardino, Bernardino Leon. Uh, and that represents more than six months of intensive consultations by the UN across Libyan society uh, and with the support of the international community. Uh, we understand that this document reflects Libyan views. It addresses the concerns of, of all parties based on their uh, input. And we believe it's a balanced document that offers the best way um, forward. And we think the Libyan people also have made clear uh, a desire uh, for peace. So we think this is a this this uh, you know political agreement represents a fair compromise, uh, and it's a solid basis for national uh, reconciliation. But it looks like the parliament uh, uh, has called uh, his uh, representatives in the talks to withdraw from the talks in Morocco. Uh, well, we've seen some reports um, uh, indicating that some in the Libyan House of Representatives. Uh, based in Tobruk, want to, want to recall their negotiators. Uh, but despite this report, it is our understanding that the Libyan delegations from, from both the House of Representatives and the former General National Congress uh, are on their way to Berlin for uh, additional meetings uh, there tomorrow. And maybe just a point on that, you know, following on these consultations in Morocco, um, the Libyan delegates are now traveling to Berlin. Uh, meetings will begin there um, uh, June 10th with the five permanent members of the Security Council, um, as well as Italy, Germany, Spain, and, and the European Union. And one more on uh, Libya, too. A uh, news report said that, that uh, ISIS has used a people smuggler caravan in Libya to kidnap 88 Eritrean uh, Christians. Do you have any... Uh any confirmation or anything? On this? Uh, we're familiar with the report. I, I, I'm not in a position to confirm uh, to confirm details. Uh, if it were true, um, you know, we certainly would condemn um, uh, this act, and we would condemn the brutality of of terrorists who would target others uh, because of their faith. Um, um, but uh, at this point, uh, I'm not able to confirm that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nicola. Sorry if I missed it, but who will be representing the U.S. government in in Berlin? 
uh, our, our ambassador, um, uh, Deborah Jones, uh, and our special envoy, uh, Jonathan Weiner, uh, will, will be there. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, go ahead. Iraq? Iraq, um, yes. It's one year since Mosul was taken by ISIS, and they still maintain the grip on the city. Do you have any um, comment? Uh, well, you know, we've always been very clear that uh, that this is a, an Iraqi-led uh, operation, and that the timetable for an offensive, first of all, with respect to, to Mosul, is one that will be set by uh, by the uh, Iraqis. Uh, we are focused on uh, getting Iraqi forces ready, uh, adequately trained and equipped, um, and uh, you know, the, uh, our efforts to train and advise Iraqi forces are ongoing at multiple sites uh, across Iraq. And uh, we're doing that in, co in cooperation not only with the Iraqi government, but also with our coalition uh, partners. And uh, so you know, that's, you know, what, that's a central part of our, of our response and of our broad international coalition, uh, which is working on uh, multiple uh, fronts and multiple lines of effort uh, to, uh, to degrade and defeat ISIL. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yes, Mary Alice. Following up on, on that question, uh, yesterday, President Obama made a comment that there was more training capacity than recruits. Could you perhaps tell us where, what the blockage is within the Iraqi government to not actually supply more recruits? Mm -hmm. Well, um, it, it is, you know, as the President said yesterday, one of the things that, uh, that we have to improve is the speed with which uh, we're training Iraqi forces, uh, and uh, and I think the president also spoke to that. We're we're uh, you know reviewing a range of plans for how that could be done, um, and uh, you know I would highlight though that uh, there is you know we have already we have trained uh, 9,000 uh, Iraqi troops. There are about 3,100 Iraqi troops uh, currently in training uh, across across Iraq uh, through our train, advise and assist program. Uh, it is also true, though, that we have greater capacity to train troops than there are troops currently in the pipeline. Um, and that's why we're working with uh, the government of Iraq to, uh, to improve that aspect of the program. This is something that Prime Minister Abadi uh, and his Council of Ministers recognize as well. Uh, you know, when, they, when they put forward the plan um, uh, on May 19th, uh, one of the things that acknowledges is ex the need to expand recruitment into the Iraqi army as, as one of the key, uh, key points uh, of that plan. But do you know what the obstacle is? Why, why are they having so much trouble getting recruits? Where is, where is the obstacle? Is it within the, the government structure itself, or is it that people just don't want to join? Um, well, uh, I, I, again, if you look at the uh, response uh, across Iraq, there is, uh, there is a lot of interest uh, in, in joining. If, uh, if we switch from the Iraqi um, uh, army to the, uh, the popular mobilization forces, um, you know there are Sunni uh, volunteers currently being trained by the by the Iraqis. Um, about a thousand Sunni fighters were inducted into the Popular Mobilization Forces at the end of May, May 27th, uh, and they joined thousands of other Sunni volunteers um, who have already joined uh, this program and are fighting side by side with Iraqi uh, Iraqi security forces. For more details about you know the the particular um, you know difficulties in recruitment, I'd refer you back. I think to uh, Iraqi uh, authorities. Roz. The uh, Pentagon's uh, spokesperson, uh, Colonel Steve Warren, just told reporters an hour ago that of the 9,000 or so that have already been trained, of a portion of them are Kurdish Peshmerga. So that actually knocks down the number of non-Kurdish Iraqi forces who have actually been trained, which doesn't exactly put a good light on the efforts to build up the capacity and to try to confront ISIL fighters. And again, to echo Mary Alice's point, are Iraqis really not willing to take up arms against ISIL, or is this just bureaucratic bottlenecks that are keeping people from uh, actually getting into the training and then getting outfitted and getting deployed? Well, to, to go back to your first point, though, um, yes, some of those uh, some of those forces that uh, which we have trained uh, are Kurdish forces, and that's been part of the plan all along. Because as we've seen, uh, there are also I mean, the Kurdish forces are also fighting back uh, against ISIL uh, in in northern Iraq in the Kurdish region. So that is uh, that is uh, you know, necessarily a part of our training uh, and, and assisting uh, mission with Iraq. So I, I don't see any reason to discount those uh, from the overall numbers that we've trained. We're, you know, we're helping Iraqis push back against ISIL 
you know, in all those places of Iraq where they have uh, tried to expand, um, not uh, not only in Anbar, although Anbar, of course, is uh, is a key uh, is a key region. But, but but it does beg the question that in a country of some twenty five odd million people, that the most that have been trained is still under ten thousand in total to date. Well, those uh, th that's uh, that's through the U.S. Uh, train advise and assist program. Um, so those are the the ones we have trained. We have a footprint of about three thousand uh, trainers uh, on the ground, um, and uh, you know that that again we're looking at ways to increase uh, the the throughput uh, and the the recruitment because we have uh, some we have some additional capacity and we want to make use of it. Um, yeah, is, yes, can I just say something here to correct the record sure. and I, to do it because I, she's too polite to herself but the person to whom you're referring is Mary Alice is named her name is Sharon oh my goodness well then I, I apologize um, uh, most heartfeltly uh, sorry about that um, yes go ahead are you convinced that the 9,000 that you have uh, trained through the American train advised and assist program have the will to fight that's certainly been uh, been our, our experience, and I think uh, you know we've uh, spoken to this since the fall uh, of Ramadi. The president uh, also has spoken about it, and you know our experience has been uh, that for those uh, you know, those forces who have gone through our train, advise, and assist program um, and are properly equipped uh, and are part of you know, an Iraqi command and control structure, uh, that uh, that they have uh, fought well. Um, that's uh, you know I think there's been a lot of uh, discussion of. Uh, the situation in Ramadi and how that differed. Um, I, I don't have anything to add to those uh, those discussions, but um, I think that's uh, you know, certainly been uh, our view of things, and I think that's shared uh, you know by others uh, in the U.S. government. Yeah. Um, yes, Michelle. Syria. Uh, rebel, yes. Uh, Syrian rebel fighters captured today a major base uh, from the Syrian army in Daraa, south of the country. Do you have any uh, anything on this? Uh, well, uh, I've, we've, we've certainly seen that report. Uh, I'm not in a position to confirm it. Um, uh, I also don't see a reason uh, to doubt it, but uh, I'm not in a position to confirm it here from, uh, from, the, from the podium. Um, and you know, the, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, th this reflects, of course, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the fact that there, there are uh, Syrians who are fighting against uh, the, the regime. Um, and uh, there will always be back and forth uh, uh, on the battlefield, uh, so uh, I don't want to uh, try to uh, analyze uh, its significance, but uh, yes, we're aware of that. Uh, I have three more on Syria. If yes. Uh, I can. Uh, were there any talks at the G G7 uh, summit uh, about the future of the uh, Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad? I'd refer you to my uh, to my White House colleagues for a more detailed readout of, uh, of the discussions related uh, to the Middle East uh, at the G7. We understood that uh, special uh, envoy to Syria, Rubinstein, will be uh, the future ambassador to uh, Tunisia. Who will replace him? Do you have any names? Well, he, uh, you, uh, you've seen, many of you probably, the, uh, the White House announcement yesterday of, of his nomination um, uh, as, uh, as ambassador to Syria. Uh, of course, he will, Tunisia. sorry, Tunisia, he will have, uh, he will have, um, uh, have to have a hearing and vote uh, in the Senate. So he will remain on the job as special envoy um, uh, until, until that time. So uh, he will be replaced, but we don't have a personnel announcement to, to make uh, right now. Um, but he will remain uh, on the job uh, you know, until, uh, until he's ready uh, to go to uh, Tunisia, assuming you know, uh, confirmation. Yes, Samir. Uh, do you know what position Ambassador Jake Wallace uh, currently in Tunisia will, will be having? No, no, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any announcement to, to make uh, on personnel. And and one more, Syrian opposition uh, factions are gathering in Egypt uh, to uh, form a new coalition as an alternative to the SOC. Uh, how do you view this meeting and the role that Egypt is playing in this regard? Uh, I'm not familiar with that report, so uh, I'm not in, in a position to comment uh, specifically uh, on that. Uh, we certainly, uh, you know, the, the Syrian opposition uh, forces have have met in a variety of places, um, uh, in a variety of different uh, formats. Uh, so I don't, uh, but I don't have uh, further uh, further comment uh, to add on that. So the SOC, the legitimate representative for the yeah, our Syrian... policy on that hasn't hasn't changed. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, 
Yes, go ahead. Uh, the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta held its annual July 4th celebration a month early this year, and the U.S. Ambassador there, Robert Blake, was quoted in the Jakarta Post as saying it was done out of respect for the Muslim holiday of Ramadan. First of all, can you explain the decision? Um, well, I think let's, uh, let's look at, uh, first of all, what uh, the official celebrations of the 4th of July uh, overseas at our, at our missions, at our embassies and consulates um, are you know, the purpose of those celebrations. These are, these are not events uh, for the American citizen uh, population that's resident there. Uh, it's not like a picnic you have uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with your family and friends when you're back here in the U.S. These are official uh, events that are the, the purpose of which is to represent the United States to the host nation and to the host government. Um, so, uh, of course, to do that most effectively, we want to do. We want to hold these uh, these events uh, when uh, when the the guests uh, are best able to uh, to attend, and when we can most uh, effectively achieve the purpose of uh, of the event, which is to represent the United States to the uh, to the host uh, to the host nation. Um, and so there are sometimes uh, when uh, you know these are sometimes held at different times uh, of the year. They're not always held exactly on July fourth. This depends in some places on the climate where you may not want to have a, a large outdoor gathering um, uh, in July. Uh, in other cases, um, you know, when you, when you uh, take into a, account uh, the observation of, of Ramadan in, in many um, predominantly Muslim uh, countries when people are fasting and may not be able um, to, to attend uh, an event such as this, that we adjust in order to most effectively carry out our role, which is to represent the United States to the to all the countries where where we're assigned given that that's the case and this must have been done previously or was this the first time uh, this has happened uh, you know, from from time to time uh, in other places so, you know it's it's a decision that's made uh, by the post um, uh, about how best uh, to do uh, to do our job which again is to represent the United States and our values to uh, uh, to the to the host nation so it's not unusual at all to do something like this um, it, it's happened before. I, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't know how often, but it's it's something certainly that uh, that has been done. Was there any anything in particular? Was there any kind of concern or anything? Was there a specific request made to have this moved, or was it? I something... don't have that level of detail. Uh, again, uh, this is this is a decision that's made by uh, by our embassies, uh, you know, in order to most effectively carry out um, their uh, their mission. Does the U.S. make similar requests of foreign embassies that uh, foreign countries that have embassies here for the same kind of? Uh, that would be movement? that would be at their at, at, at the discretion of an embassy that's uh, that's here when they choose to host uh, to hold there. Um, I, I assume they would have similar considerations. They would want to have uh, as many people as possible come, uh, and uh, they would make their decisions about scheduling accordingly. But I don't uh, have. Uh, you know, I don't have details to share about uh, foreign government's uh, deliberations. Has the U.S. ever made such a request, as far as you know, to actually have a, a national day moved that for a well, foreign again, embassy the, in these, the U.S.? Well, uh, again, as I said before, these decisions are made by our embassies overseas, um, you know, based on their assessment of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the best way uh, to do their jobs. Um, so I don't have uh, anything further to say than that. Nicole, go ahead. Well, well hold yeah. on a second. Are you aware of it being done anywhere else this year? I'm not aware. No, uh, we have not done a. Uh, Did the Indonesians survey. ask for this? The uh, premise, again, of, I think, the premise uh, it, of the question seemed to be that the Indonesians had asked. Well, and I think I said that this is a decision that's made. Uh, this is made by uh, that's great. by our embassy, not. Uh, Did the you know, Indonesians ask? I I don't. Uh, I'm not aware of a of a request. Will there uh, be a? Uh, I've lived overseas in a number of places and have sure. been invited as an American citizen to embassy Fourth of July parties. Is there going to be one? Again, that's a decision. You know, th 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 there's there's a decision. There's first of all, there's an official uh, representational event which which embassies hold, um, and and then it's at the discretion of the ambassador or chief of mission um, whether they want to do something for the embassy community, the American community. That is not paid for by official representation expenses. That's you know usually organized uh, more informally. I don't I don't know exactly what the what the plans are for uh, uh, for embassy uh, Jakarta uh, in so that we, uh, in that regard. So we shouldn't plan to go to Jakarta and enjoy an. I'm sure they will welcome related. you whenever you come, uh, <laughs> Matt. Um, you can you can rest assured. Um, Nicole. Oh, just a bit of housekeeping. I was wondering if you could give us a readout on uh, the talks in Vienna. Any update? 
Uh, well, uh, no, I don't have any any update to, to offer. Under Secretary Sherman is back uh, in Washington uh, right now. Um, you know, she was uh, in talks last week. Also participated in. Uh, I believe so, but I would have to check uh, on that. I don't okay. have, uh, you know, as, as you know, we uh, don't typically out have a substantive update, but I'm happy to check and see if okay. the expert level talks and another little bit are of ongoing. Housekeeping. Yeah. Um, Under Secretary Gottmiller is in Vienna, I think, for Open Skies Treaty Review. Okay. Um, According to your schedule. Yes. I was wondering if I could get a read out of that or if you would take the question. Uh, I'm happy to look into uh, yeah her schedule and see if we can share more about uh, about her program and uh, and the talks there. Thank you. Um, go ahead, please. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, on Bangladesh, mm -hmm. uh, last week uh, Indian Prime Minister visited Bangladesh. The reason I am asking that after it was significant and international media, including the Washington Post, reported on his visit. And after the President Obama visit to India, I have raised this question to the director of. Uh, President Obama, Phil Reina, he said that the President Obama and the Indian Prime Minister discussed on the regional peace and stability and strengthening the democracy, including Bangladesh. So do you think after this visit, Bangladesh is on right track to peace and stability and strengthening democracy? Well, uh, I, I don't really have a comment on uh, prime, on the Prime Minister's uh, visit to Bangladesh. Uh, you know, of course, we support uh, good relations uh, between the two countries, but I don't have further, uh, you know, any further comment uh, to to offer um, on uh, uh, on that uh, on that visit. Um, yes, go ahead, Arshad. I'd like to return to something we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, does the U.S. do U.S. officials have any plans to meet with? Or let me ask it more simply: Will U.S. officials meet with the Muslim Brotherhood figures who are uh, coming to town for uh, a private conference? So yes, we did talk about this uh, yesterday, um, and uh, with with respect to this uh, delegation, um, the State Department is not uh, planning uh, a meeting uh, with uh, with the visiting uh, delegation. Uh, well, uh, we, as I said yesterday, we engage with representatives uh, from across the, the political spectrum, um, and uh, this is a group we've also uh, met with uh, in, in the recent past, um, uh, but uh, you know, don't have any further, uh, uh, further reason. Uh, we uh, simply uh, aren't meeting with them this time. No change in policy. We remain, uh, you know, we, re we, re we remain in contact. We will remain in contact with groups across the political spectrum uh, the, in Egypt. Did the Egyptian government convey to the U.S. government its displeasure at the possibility of U.S. officials meeting with uh, Brotherhood figures uh, again following the meeting in January? Uh, you mean you mean since January? Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't have uh, I don't have any uh, any details of uh, discussions with the Egyptian government to to read out on that. Uh, on that what score. was was the? Do you have any greater information now about whether uh, Ambassador Beecroft was called in to convey that message? Uh, again, I don't have anything further to add to, to yesterday's uh, discussion uh, on that. So you just don't have anything more to say to the Brotherhood right now. And that's why you're not going to meet them, and you don't think they have anything worth saying to you. Uh, well, uh, again, yeah, we we've met with uh, met with this group in the past. Uh, don't uh, uh, we haven't changed our policy? We will continue to meet with groups, uh, you know, across uh, the political spectrum. Um, no, uh, uh, but we don't have any plans to meet with this group at this particular time. How do you address what might be the view of some that you've caved to the Egyptian government on this by choosing not to meet with uh, Brotherhood uh, figures? Well, there was never there was never any meeting planned, um, so uh, we haven't changed uh, a uh, a decision. Uh, again, we simply uh, reached a decision that uh, we would not meet at this time, um, but we haven't reversed a decision. Uh, there was uh, this is a group we've met with in the past, and uh, our policy remains the same. Uh, I'm a yep. little confused. Did they ask for a meeting? Was uh, it? I mean, it sounds as though you're saying that there was never any meeting planned. So. Did they ask for one and you said no, or did you offer one and then decide that you said a decision was made? So, did you offer one and then decide that oh, maybe no, this is a bad idea? I don't have that level of detail about whether uh, whether they requested uh, a meeting. Ar Arshad asked the question yesterday about whether uh, whether we would uh, be meeting with them. So that's that's what I was re responding. Well, yeah, responding but his to. question was based on the on 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 the the summoning of the ambassador to the foreign ministry to. Hear Egyptian unhappiness with the prospect of a potential meeting. 
Mm -hmm. So was there any reason for the Egyptian government to be concerned? Well, uh, I, I don't have that level of uh, detail. Um, I, again, as I said, we, uh, we, we there, there, was, there was never there was never a meeting uh, there was never a meeting scheduled. Um, uh, so uh, that's all I've got. Uh, Can you explain one more time why it is that you don't see it to be fitting to meet with members of the Muslim Brotherhood or figures, because not all of them, I think, are actually technically members of what is now. Uh, as you know, a, a banned group in Egypt. Um, wh why not meet with them? If, if it is your policy to meet with all, uh, uh, to deal with the entirety of the political spectrum in Egypt, wh why not meet with them? You don't meet with them in Cairo, right? So why, why not meet with them here? And what is the util What is the benefit of not meeting with them? Well, I, I didn't say there was a, there was a, a benefit of not meeting. Uh, what what I said uh, was, you know, the, the department, uh, you know, we, we remain in contact with the wide variety of uh, of political uh, views and uh, organizations, groups, um, and that will continue to be the case. Um, you know, we also have to make decisions about uh, when uh, you know when when to meet. Um, you know, there's there, there are a lot of uh, a lot of people out there uh, to meet with. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's really just a question of. Uh, you know, the, uh, if it comes down to that, and uh, at this time we've uh, decided not to, not to hold a meeting. Um, but of course, we remain interested in, uh, in our, uh, in developments in Egypt, uh, and uh, we will remain in contact with, uh, with a with a variety of uh, of political and uh, and other organizations. Just not the Brotherhood. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that we've, uh, uh, again, we've met with uh, this group in the past, and we will remain in contact with, uh, with uh, organizations across the political spectrum. Do you expect to meet them in the future at some point? Or you can't even say that? Well, uh, again, as I said, we haven't changed our policy uh, uh, on this. So um, in, this, in this particular case, you know, a decision, uh, made a decision not to go forward with the meeting, but um, it doesn't, uh, it's not a... Uh, it's not a policy change. And just last one, you said not to go forward with a meeting. To go back to Matt's question, was there ever any discussion of the possibility of meeting with them? How do you mean? Uh, what sort of discussion do you mean? Well, I mean, internally, did you talk this over and decide, no, we're not going to do this, or yes, we are going to do this? I mean, you actually, was, was there ever, were you, did you actually consider a meeting for this week, and then you just decided, no, we won't do that? Um, well, we've uh, we we decided not to, uh, not to hold uh, hold the meeting, um, you know, and uh, I don't have more to say uh, beyond that. Go ahead. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know. This is getting murkier and murkier. What, what was there a consideration of having a meeting with these people or not? Well. Uh, well, yes. The question was raised yes. yesterday. Um, uh, yes, and I didn't. You considered have it offer. yesterday, and then uh, decided, no. Well, no, the, the the question was asked. I know. Yesterday. Um, I, I know. Maybe you don't have this level of specificity. Was but was the question is this? Were you considering? Was the building at some point considering meeting with this delegation that includes Muslim Brotherhood people mm -hmm. while they were in the United States, and a decision taken not to meet with them, or was That's it correct. never? A yes. con it was being considered. And it was decided, no, we won't so, have a meeting. Or was it never a consideration at all, and the Egyptians are concerned about nothing? So, uh, you know, we we have we decided not to, not to meet with this uh, this group. Okay. So um, you know, was it a, was it their request to have a meeting, or was uh, that it, goes back to uh, I think you, you, don't you asked. I, I I don't okay. uh, I don't have that level um, of of specificity. China. Yes, go ahead. China, China yes. Yeah. Reason for not meeting with them. I mean, if you I, want... If Roz, you want I don't have anything to add to what, uh, to what I already said uh, to Arshad uh, uh, on this. Uh, go ahead. Chinese military leaders are uh, visiting U.S. Uh, it has a report that the vice chair, chairman of the Central Military Commission, the Fan Changlong, is currently visiting the U.S. And then the several reports say that he visited a joint base in U.S. And later on Thursday, he will meet with the State Department's official. Do you have any further information to read out? Uh, I, I don't. If this is something that's uh, that you're talking about, a schedule for late, something scheduled later in the week, I don't have uh, I don't have any uh, any confirmation of that to, to offer. Um, if it's something that happens later in the week, we may have more to say about it uh, then. But I don't have uh, I don't have um, the, that confirmation in front what, of me. Um, is there any the specific issue or topic that you are preparing for for during meeting with him? 
such again, as I don't, this. I don't have, I don't have confirmation in front of me of uh, of the uh, meeting you're referring to, so I simply don't have anything, uh, anything but to share. Meeting for for he, between the the Chinese China, China and U.S. the military exchange or. Is Mil military exchange? Well, like if, it, the, if it's yeah. a question of military exchange, I'd refer you back to my colleagues at the Pentagon. Um, if there's uh, something coming up here later in this week, I simply don't have that information in front of me. We'll have uh, more to say, I imagine, when we when we get to that point uh, in the week. Uh, Sharon. Um, on Yemen, on the upcoming... Having corrected myself. On the upcoming talks, uh, that the UN-led talks on Yemen, will the U.S. be present at that uh, meeting, and what kind of role do you expect them to play? Well, uh, the the talks are happening uh, on on June fourteenth, um, uh, and uh, we certainly welcome the announcement uh, that that these UN facilitated consultations uh, will begin in Geneva uh, then uh, next week. Uh, that is, um, and we reiterate uh, the the call from the UN Security Council for Yemenis to attend these talks in good faith and without any preconditions. Um, this is all uh, focused on a rapid resumption of the Yemeni political transition process which is in line with the existing uh, initiatives. Um, now, the United Nations is facilitating the, uh, the talks. So for questions about uh, you know, who has been invited and, um, and, and the format uh, of the talks, uh, I would, I would uh, defer to, to the UN uh, on that. The United States, for our part, remains committed to supporting uh, the, the UN in its efforts, uh, along with our partners in the international community. Can you not say if the UN will have someone at the table? Well, again, these are it's the the, the UN is uh, is facilitating the talks, uh, so uh, we would defer to them for the arrangements um, uh, for for the talks themselves. Again, these are Yemen, these are focused um, on Yemeni parties and political entities um, to discuss the situation uh, in Yemen. So it's you know that's that's where the focus of of these talks uh, will be. Yes, I wanted to go back to uh, the passport um, case in the Supreme Court, and these are uh, okay. kind of logistical, technical questions that I have. But um, I'm, you may not have the answer to them. But if you don't, um, if if some if someone could find out the answers, uh, just go ahead. Um, one is it correct that this situation, in terms of Americans wanting pa who were born in Jerusalem, wanting to have Jerusalem, Israel listed as a as their uh, birthplace? Uh, is it is this a unique situation? Does this exist anywhere else where only a city is 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 listed um, without 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 a country mm -hmm. in a passport? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know the answer to that uh, off the top of my head. I'm happy to check. As far as you know, though, yeah. if you're an American citizen applying for a passport, you were born in Tel Aviv. It will say Tel Aviv, Israel. Right. That's my There's understanding. There's no issue. What about if you're uh, born in Ramallah? Does it say I, I, I'm, Palestine? I'm sure it's happened. I don't, uh, but I don't know. Um, Does it I say I don't Palestinian know. Authority? So that these are questions. No, I understand the question. Uh, I simply don't. Uh, I simply don't know the answer. And to, to take it further, that I, I can't. I'm not sure that there's any other. The situation of Jerusalem is unique, but there are other, at least one other divided city that I'm aware of, and I'm wondering if you could take that, and that's, that would be Nicosia mm -hmm. and Cyprus. So that if you're born in North Nicosia, an American, does it say that you were born in Cyprus, even though they identify as being with part of a country that only Turkey recognizes? Right, Turkish I understand country. the question. Um, so I, th those are my questions on uh on that. Well, you predicted accurately that I don't have that information in front of me, but I'm happy to look into that, and, and then, we'll come back um, to you. This is not related at all, but it's uh, but it has to do with Israel and the Palestinian territories, and that is, um, I'm sure you're aware that the European Union is preparing um, regulations that would require uh, products made in the settlements to be identified as such, and uh, I'm wondering if the United States has any, the administration has any position on whether or not this is a a good thing, a bad thing, or if you're neutral and different on it? Well, it's my understanding this is something that is still under discussion, uh, so I would refer you to the, the EU and the European Commission for, uh, for any, any of the, the details. So, and since it remains an internal uh, matter um, for the European Union, I, I'm not going to uh, speculate about, uh, uh, about, uh, about that uh, while it remains uh, under discussion uh, internally. I'm not quite sure I understand that. So you don't have any position on whether goods, products, goods and products made, produced in 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 uh, settlements in the West Bank should 
be labeled or should not be labeled as coming from there? Again, this is a this is a a, a measure uh, that is under consideration uh, within the European Union. Um, they haven't uh, they haven't finished it. They uh, they are discussing it. Uh, I, d I don't have a comment to, to offer. So the administration's view is that it won't take a position on this until after it's too late. I mean, isn't it precisely un during the time that something is under consideration that you would want to weigh in to have your voice heard if you had a position? Well, uh, again, this is the, this is their uh, their matter that they're discussing internally. Um, I don't have my understanding that the United States opposed boycotts or what it thought to be what or actions that it thought to amount to boycotts uh, of Israel. Is this uh, do you do you not regard this as something along those lines? Well, we've said many times that that boycotts of Israel are unhelpful, um, and and we oppose them. Um, we've we've said that uh, many occasions, okay. and uh, I'm happy to repeat that. Um, your question um, is a, is, a, is a more speculative one because they haven't uh, concluded uh, their their discussions of what uh, what steps they may take, uh, and so I'm not going to uh, to speculate about uh, about uh, a decision they haven't you don't reached yet. It, so, so the administration takes no position yet on on whether labeling of products that are made in in the settlements amounts to something bad uh, as it relates to a, a, a boycotts which you oppose. Uh, right. I don't have anything more to say on yeah. It, uh, um, on in terms of country of label or um, origin, country of origin labeling, you're familiar with the dispute with Canada and Mexico over this. Go on. The United States is you lost a WTO decision on country of label origin for some. Uh, for beef and some other uh, and other meats, and I'm just wondering if, in fact, the United States is so keen on the idea that some products should be labeled for according to where they originated, uh, if that would weigh into a position on this EU settlement labeling. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, right, I understand the question. I just simply don't have uh, uh, I don't have anything more to offer uh, on that one. Mm -hmm. Rohingya and Bangladeshi yes. Muslims in Myanmar. What, do you have any update? Like we've been talking about this. Uh, well, the um, we're we're aware of of reports of uh, about 150 uh, migrants uh, who may be uh, repatriated to uh, to uh, Bangladesh uh, within the coming days. This was the result of cooperation between the governments of Burma and Bangladesh uh, to to address the situation of these particular uh, migrants. We urge. Um, uh, encourage Burma and Bangladesh to continue to facilitate the uh, unrestricted humanitarian access uh, and uh, to work with international organizations like the UNHCR and the International Organization for Migration and to process these migrants um, in, in line with their international uh, commitments. And we also understand that the governments of Burma and Bangladesh are working with appropriate international organizations uh, to verify the identities of, uh, of, the, of the migrants um, uh, who are uh, who have been dis who have disembarked, um, and uh, so that's uh, that's the current uh, update that I have. Thank you. Just just follow uh, up on this. Yes, uh, the U.S. has urged to the Myanmar authority to accept Rohingya uh, Muslim as a minority citizen. So, what's the response of this uh, urge? Uh, the, 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 which, whose U, response? U, U.S. Myanmar respond. U.S. and President Obama has urged to the Myanmar authority the Rohingya Muslims treated as as minority citizen. Mm -hmm. So, oh, well, uh, you know, our uh, our view on this ha hasn't changed. I'd refer you back to the uh, to the, uh, the Burma Myanmar authorities for uh, for their point of view. But uh, but our point of view in this remains uh, consistent. Go ahead, please. Yes, um, there have been reports that uh, Governor Onaga uh, is scheduling a meeting with Ambassador Kennedy. Do you have any details? Or I don't have any details to share. Of course, he was just here, and we met uh, met with him here in Washington. But uh, beyond the readout we put out of that meeting, I don't have anything further to add. But can um, you uh, that Ambassador Kennedy will be traveling to Okinawa. Later I don't have her schedule uh, uh, details uh, here to confirm. Go ahead. Uh, Rob's do you last have uh, Do you have any comment on the lawsuit brought by two Yemeni families alleging that their two relatives were unlawfully killed during a U.S. drone strike back in 2012? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, as with any ongoing litigation, uh, we, we refrain from, uh, from commenting uh, on matters while they're uh, under litigation. I would refer you back to the Department of Justice for anything on that. 
Thanks, everyone. I have, oh, I, I go have ahead, one Matt. more, and that yep. is uh, just, um, the on June third, there was a notice published in the Federal Register about the uh, um, changes, potential changes to the ITAR, the International Trafficking Arms mm -hmm. Regulations, that have uh, some of which have um, raised the concern of the NRA and other Second Amendment groups who say that this uh, these regulations, if if enacted, could either ban so, so certain discussions of firearms and ammunition specifications online w w without prior federal approval. Is the State Department proposing regulations or changes to the ITAR regulations that would restrict the right of free speech on, on issues like this? I'm not familiar with this uh, with with this regulation uh, regulatory change uh, or the the, the um, question you've asked, Matt. So, you know, of course, we take our uh, constitutional and legal responsibilities uh, uh, seriously. Right. Um, I, I don't have details about this particular case in could, front of me. Could could you, could you uh, ask someone to to, to look into it? Uh, sure, I'm happy to do that. Uh, because it has become a, a, an issue in mm -hmm. those circles. Mm. All right, thanks, everyone.